$130 million that she covered up. And here's the kicker. Then he broke up with her and she turned him in. But the key is don't break up with the girlfriend if she's covering up your bad stuff. The truth will come out, I think, uh, unless the media keeps burying it under the drivel that that they seem to be putting out. But maybe people like you and, and some of the internet journalists will, will do a better job uh, exposing the truth. The day, literally 24 hours after Bernie admitted to his son that he, you know, had perpetrated the, a big fraud, he was in handcuffs. And you know, he was my neighbor here in North Carolina for oh. a number of years before he passed, uh, you know, in prison. So, look, the fact that that SBF is on a press tour uh, and not in a jail cell is incomprehensible. Uh, the the extent of the fraud is is clear. It is profound. You know, the the guy who cleaned up the Enron mess, who has been charged with cleaning up this mess, publicly stated that this is a worse disaster and debacle than Enron. And Enron was pretty bad. And and people went to jail. Uh, you know, somebody actually, you know, died in jail. Um, so uh it it's an interesting dynamic. And you know, we have a story in the New York Times saying that he's just a misunderstood philanthropist. Yeah. Are you kidding me? I mean, seriously, are, are you kidding me? And then the New York Times again does this this puff piece. Well, Sam deflected yeah. and redirected and nobody pressed him on it. And that's just crazy. I'm 100% convinced and I actually have evidence of it given I'm a large investor in, in one of the companies that he defrauded and uh, directly. Um, so, you know, I look, I... Anyone who just watched that video would say it's it's literally like watching a training tape for how to spot a liar, right? <laughs> Liars lie. You know his his lack of of eye contact. Uh, I mean, at one point he's jittering so much. Now maybe he he didn't have enough of his ADD medicine. Maybe, but I, I mean he he's clearly lying. Sam's Sam's a liar. And he's, he's always been a liar. Now, he's also been coached clearly very well by legal team, probably the best legal team that money can buy, the money that he stole. And he's been told to say a certain number of things. I didn't knowingly commit fraud. It's like saying manslaughter has a lower sentence than premeditated murder. So if I can just get off on the lower, I, I didn't know it was fraud. I, I just made yeah. a mistake. I did, I did, you know, it was a mislabeled bank account. Nonsense. And look, I've never met the person. I've, I've never met the man. Um, we passed on this deal three times. Not, no information. We didn't know it was fraud uh, until too late. But, but the bottom line, had I ever met him, I'm fairly confident in saying that I, I would have turned and run away. And right. his girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, Caroline, worse. I mean, anyone who's seen the video of her that person was no way in charge of a $20 billion trading enterprise, which turns out there was no trading enterprise. So what I am willing to believe is that these two are useful idiots. Right. They are just pawns in a very large, very elaborate system that was designed, one, to do money laundering, and there's clear evidence of, of money laundering. Two, uh, that perhaps there was intent, again, uh, this is a supposition, not an accusation. Uh, I'm just trying to put the pieces together. It is certainly possible that uh, th there was an intent by someone or someones to have this be an example set so that yeah. regulators could come in and punish the industry. I, I guess earlier today, right before we got on, on air, uh, someone tweeted that a senator asked a congressional hearing whether there should be a pause in crypto until mm -hmm. America until the US regulators can regulate it. I, I can't talk about it actually um because of of the situation and and because you know the let's just say look everyone knows that we Morgan Creek are are large investors in BlockFi. Everyone knows and it's a public I can, I can give you public available information. Mm -hmm. Public information is that uh BlockFi had made a large loan to Alameda uh, and, and had dealings with FTX. 
Uh, there are now, now I, now that's all I can say that that's the public information. There are lots of suppositions and speculation as to some things that went on in the, the closing days before the, the bankruptcy. Uh, but the reality is that they lied about collateral. They said they had good collateral and, and they didn't. That, that's fraud. Look, we, we, we're in the third phase of what I'll call the four phases of digital asset adoption. So it's the famous Gandhi quote, right? First, they ignore you. Then they laugh at you. Then they fight you. Then you win. And, you know, from 2009 to 15, when digital assets were created and Satoshi Nakamoto created Bitcoin and then other assets followed, huh, they ignore you, right? It was like a bunch of nerds and geeks playing with their magic internet money, whatever. Then they laugh at you. So 2016 to 21, ha, 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 a bunch of nerds and geeks playing with their magic internet money. Oh, look, one of these nerds and geeks actually named the Miami Stadium. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, big deal. Um, 2022, we entered the then they fight you phase. And it started in, in May, right, with the Luna debacle. And literally the moment... And the morning after the Luna crash, Janet Yellen was on television saying, in prepared remarks, we need regulation of stable coins. That was prepared, right? That, so then you, you have a, a number of, of intimations about you know, regulation. And at the end of the day, well, and it actually can go back even further to the attacks on the lenders, Celsius, Block 5, Voyager, not the FTX rescues, but the attacks by the states and the SEC. Uh, and the regulation has been used against disruptors for centuries. And so regulation is a tool used by incumbents. And what does blockchain technology do? It replaces trust with truth. Well, who are the arbiters of trust today? Financial institutions, third-party middle people, $7 trillion industry, okay? They would like to not be disrupted by DeFi and digital assets. So it's possible that some group uh, of incumbents might have tried to lobby for regulation to delay, obfuscate, uh, change the course of of the the disruption, perhaps. So that's that's what it it's possible. It, you know, it, it's it's probably not a surprise that uh, a kid who really had no experience in lobbying, no experience in in politics, no experience in running uh, an exchange or a trading organization. Um, no, no real work experience to speak of a couple of years, um, suddenly becomes an expert in trust law and exchange operations and arbitrage trading, uh, and becomes the largest donor to Joe Biden's, uh, election campaign, second largest donor last year to the democratic party. It's not, so it's not shocking that his mother runs one of the largest packs, secretive packs that the Silicon Valley elite use to kind of get around campaign finance laws. That's not surprising to anybody, perhaps. Um, is it a surprise that his father is, you know, went to Yale Law School with a lot of people who are in government and uh, perhaps is a known expert on trust law? Interesting. Uh, advisor to some of the regulatory agencies, Caroline's father, the head of the uh, economics department at MIT. Her dad was Gary Gensler's boss. I'm not again. I'm, all of these things just point. They they paint a really interesting picture. Mm -hmm. So I actually think the SEC has done a really really good job up to this point. But there's something funny about two kids with no experience and clearly no uh, ability to run this complex business, um, then turning out that half of it, like half of the companies that Alameda invested in Michelle are shell companies owned by SBF 100%. Like that, that's just, that's a funny thing.
That's mm-hmm. not, when I make an investment out of our venture fund, I don't own any piece of them ever. I, that would be a total conflict. So the yeah. fact that half of the 400 companies are shell companies that he owns just, just seems odd. Not once have I ever seen a situation where a person invest hundreds, $250 million in venture funds, and then the venture funds put $150 million into that person's company. Maybe it's happened and I just didn't see it, but I've never heard of that ever. So, and and then the last part of it is the relationship with Ukraine and Zelensky is very odd, yeah. right? Money, money going straight from Ukraine and Zelensky to FTX, um, that money vanishing, um, personal loan to SBF, massive donations to Democratic Party. If you actually sent all this stuff through digital assets, people can trace it. So it's not it's not conjecture mm-hmm. that Ukraine sent money to FTX. That's not conjecture. Yeah. It's fact. So it's not a conspiracy theory. It's fact. Now, the part that's missing is how the money got from customer accounts into Sam's pocket to make the political contributions. That's a little bit unclear, but that's where the fraud comes in. Two years went by, multiple audits of big name firms, $130 million that she covered up. And here's the kicker. Then he broke up with her and she turned him in. But the key is don't break up with the girlfriend if she's covering up your bad stuff. In just about every fraud I've ever seen, they're family relationships. I think the same thing is true here. You've got an uncle that's involved as, as an accountant. you got the aunt that, you know, some advisor to WEF. I mean, there's all these weird things. And, and look, the truth will come out, I think, uh, unless the media keeps burying it under the drivel that that they seem to be putting out. But maybe people like you and, and some of the internet journalists will, will do a better job uh, exposing the truth. 